My name is Karina Day, this is COM 101. My speech is about the Nevada test site and atmospheric testing and underground nuclear testing. These are my note cards. And I also have um, pictures as display during my speech. And this is my audience. The best thing to happen to Las Vegas was the atomic bomb, quoted by the late Benny Binion, owner of Binion's Casino and Hotel located on Fremont Street. Quoted by Steve Bornfeld, Review Journal, April 2011, web source. With each atmospheric test produced a massive mushroom cloud and a bright light that could be seen for hundreds of miles around. This encouraged tourists to come to Las Vegas to witness the atomic power for those of you born after 1990s when the Cold War came to an end, nuclear awareness has become less prominent and activists have forgotten. How many of you knew that atomic testing took place only 65 miles north of Las Vegas? My husband's grandfather actually worked for eg and at the Nevada test site as an engineer. This is Mr. Donzi. He worked with EG&G &G and he did video recordings of the tests. He actually has many participation certificates for all the underground tests that he participated in. And these are just a few of them. They were cartoon diagrams. In researching this presentation has definitely piqued my interest and made me more of a conscious citizen. Nevada test site was created by the United States government in a race for knowledge to understand the awesome new power of the atomic bomb. With little knowledge of the grave consequences to the environment and population that atmospheric testing and underground testing would cause. Today I'll speak to you about the Nevada test site now known as the Nevada National Security Site, but for the duration of the speech I'll refer to it as a Nevada test site. First I'll talk to you about the atmospheric testing the purpose of the testing and the environmental issues. Second, I'll discuss the shift to underground nuclear testing and the purpose of the testing and the environmental issues that arose from that. With the threat of nuclear power being harnessed and used for war, the nuclear arms race in the Cold War began. Russia has shown that they had the knowledge and the means to start testing with their first atmospheric test back in 1949. You, this led the US to start testing right away. U.S. started testing in the winter of 1951. They conducted over 80 atmospheric tests between the dates of 1951 and 1963. That was over five atmospheric tests per year. Atmospheric testing refers to the explosion in or above the atmosphere. The purpose of atmospheric testing was to learn and study how to use nuclear weaponry in the battlefield. For example, if attacked, or attacking, how quickly could our troops get to the ground zero? What would be the damage at or around ground zero? And what would be the radiation levels to our troops? The 2000 report by the United Nations Scientific Committee stated each nuclear test resulted in an unrestrained release into the environment of substantial quantities of radioactive material dispersed in the atmosphere and deposited everywhere on Earth's surface referenced by the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty Organization, Web Source 2012. I'm waking up to ash and dust, breathing in chemicals. This is it, the apocalypse. Welcome to the new age, welcome to the new age. I'm radioactive, a quote by Imagine Dragons, radioactive album and song, Web Source 2012. 1963 brings the, the limited test ban treaty, which states, no atmospheric testing in the oceans, air, or space. This opens the door to underground testing. 
Over 800 nuclear tests took place at the Nevada test site between 1958 and 1992, approximately 25 a year for the next 30 years. The purpose of the atomic bomb was to make it more sophisticated and more powerful in the use for war, limiting fallout. It was also used for civilian use to experiment with harbors, dams, and nuclear energy power. The United States tried to control the radiation release with underground testing, but in 150 cases, it was released into the Earth's atmosphere. Reported by Kevin Voigt, CNN, Web Source 2013, who interviewed Annika Thornburg with the spokesperson of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty Organization, 2012. One of the most serious accidents was in 1970. Substantial fallout was detected off-site Nevada and surrounding states, reported by Mary Pelsky, 2009, Publications, Nevada Humanitarian's Web Source. 1996, the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, in 1996, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty started. Bill Clinton was the first president to sign, was the first world leader to sign the treaty. Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty is banning nuclear explosion by everyone, everywhere, on Earth's surface, in the atmosphere, underwater, and underground. Referenced by Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization 2012. In closing, I have shared with you some very informative information about the two types of tests that took place, atmospheric and underground. The impacts that affected our environment and the population, the public outrage that forced the government to implement the test ban treaty. If this has piqued your interest, the National Atomic Testing Museum is located on East Flamingo by UNLV. To close out, I leave you with the Las Vegas with the lyrics for the Las Vegas band Killers Battleborn album Miss Atomic Bomb Song 2012. I see the light, I feel the heat. Your shockwave whispered has sealed your fate. The dust cloud is settled, my eyes are clear. You're gonna miss me when you're gone, you're gonna miss me when you're gone, Miss Atomic Bomb. Thank you very much.